Hey, thanks for jumping in on another episode of Nerd Talk here on the Nerd Network. We are excited to bring you our review of the sixth episode of the Halo series of Season 2, Onyx. With me are two of our wonderful Halo Spartans here at the Network. First, we have the Yellow Bladed Knight himself. Nathan, how are you doing, sir? Good. How are you doing, Jake? I am wonderful. Um, I'm better now that I've watched that episode and I'm done with it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. And then we have our, our Spartan from Down Under. Well, from Bama. Not Down Under, because that sounds like a strip. Shut up. We got Kevin. How you doing, Kevin? Hey, I'm doing good, except I had to watch uh, Random Sci-Fi Universe in Halo Universe. Random in... Sci-Fi Universe cosplays Halo. It's it's not even cosplay anymore. I haven't seen Master Chief in his armor for like five episodes. This is not Halo. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the creators heard all the reactions of like, y'all took Master Chief's helmet off and the creators were like, hold our beer. <laughs> like, fuck. If you're new to Nerd Network or Nerd Talk episodes or, you know, the internet, uh, what we like to do here is give you a non-spoiler thought up top, usually 16 to 90 seconds each, and then we give you a spoiler warning, we dive into the episode. And I can tell you, we're going to tear this episode up. So if you have seen it, stay with us after the break, let us break down for you, and conversate with us in the uh, in the chat, or not the chat, the uh, comments. Uh, we would love to hear your opinions. Uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback in previous videos. And it's pretty universal opinions on this series. That all said, Kevin, 60 to 90 seconds, non-spoiler thoughts, hit me. Garbage. Okay, Nate, no. <laughs> Anything else? I mean, it, there's no way to recover the show now. I was holding out hope that they might be able to pull something out of the trunk and... Uh, yeah, it uh, turns out their heads are up the trunk, so... I agree. I, I agree. Nathan? I tend to agree with you guys. I had high hopes that somehow they'd set up Reach decent, and then from there it's just been one giant big piece of garbage. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, um, I don't have high hopes for the remainder of the season. Um, I will tell you, I think some of the strongest writing in the series was in this episode. And I think the entire episode, you could have balled it up in front of the trash and the season wouldn't have suffered. Which is horrible. It suffered more. When you have the best dialogue so far, and the episode doesn't matter. Um, it's unfortunate. It really is. Uh... Yeah. Any more thoughts before we go to spoiler alert? I have to agree. The sad part I found about this episode was the the writing. I actually was actually it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Better writing than I think we've gotten throughout the rest of the series. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. It almost then, resembled the story. Yeah. Yeah. And like it, it was interesting. Like I was engaged, and then. Like you said, it, it doesn't matter, which is sad. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. Um, I think there's a lot of great um, small scenes. So last year, we did Secret Invasion here on the channel. And that was just a pile of, of garbage. It's the first thing in Marvel that they put out in Disney Plus that I've been like, don't watch it. But it had some of the best two-person scenes in the MCU. Because of the chemistry of the actors and the writing. That's how I feel about this episode. There's some scenes between Parangoski and Ackerson. There's some scenes between Halsey and Quan Ha. There's some scenes between Master Chief and other characters. That are on point. But they're surrounded by... Crap. <laughs> so, you guys ready to talk spoilers? Yes. Alright, let's, let's wade into this mess and... You know, maybe take a couple of elites down with us, because the show's going down with us. 
All right, folks, this is your spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the episode, hit pause here. Go watch the episode on Paramount+. Plus. Come back and enjoy our breakdown and evisceration of this ungodly mess. But we will see you after the break. Hey there, thank you for choosing the Nerd Network for this piece of your content. We're excited to bring all this kind of content to you. So I'd like to stop for a moment and remind you to like this video. The YouTube will share with all of your friends. Subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you know when we drop more nerdy content. If you're like me and you have a big interest in our biggest nerdy franchises out there, check out the Nerd Republic. That is our home for all the adventures in a galaxy far, far away with our Star Wars content. Take a look at Section 31, which if you like morals more than action adventure, that is our home for all of our Star Trek content. If you're like me and you love a good adventure with superheroes, check out The Marvelous Nerds. It's where we locate all of our Marvel content. We also have our new brand, Ready Player Nerd, for all the gamers out there. Thank you for choosing the Nerd Network. All right, welcome back. If you're still with us, that means either you've seen the episode and are ready to talk with us, or haven't seen the episode, don't care, because rapidly losing the fan base in this one, and you just want to hear us talk about it, which is arguably going to be more entertaining than the show. Uh, so we open on a Spartan 3 mission. They, uh, What I thought they were going to do is ODST drop in the beginning, but then they are functionally just jumping from ship to ship. They board the Covenant Corvette, uh, and they make their way to the bridge. They all basically get murdered and murked. Um, then it's revealed this is a simulation. Kai debriefs them. She has this wonderful quote about bullseyeing a elite at 200 meters with a rifle. And compares that to the Covenant ships. How they have uh, incredibly advanced targeting systems. But they can hit a ship but they can't hit the Marines because she compares it to her fighting a swarm of bees. Uh, we then cut to a Kai Colonel Perez conversation because apparently Colonel Perez is going to be a Spartan three now about reach and the fall of reach and the battle there. Kai has this awesome line about being in one battle doesn't make you a veteran. And that's the end of that conversation. We then cut to a conversation where Perrin, Gosk and Ackerson are sharing tea and she talks about Sri Lanka and her homeland and how this was an effort and a story behind the tea and then reveals that they developed it here on station. Um, she then brings up that Halsey was sighted on the planet Illyria with the largest man ever seen and says that her and Chief are on planet. We then get Master Chief on Onyx with the group surveying the facility and we cut to title sequence. So, guys, who had money on that Perengoski had poisoned Ackerson in that conversation? <laughs> I wish. I literally, from the tension that was building, and the way he was like, I literally thought she was going to be like, the small detail you overlooked was the metallic taste of the hemlock. Yeah. I really felt I like that's really... where she was going. I was expecting a Vader moment there. You have <laughs> failed me for the last time, Ackerson. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Nathan, actually both of you, I want to point out something that's very evident in just this first opening sequence. Colonel Perez left Reach just before Master Chief. She obviously has been a part of this unit for a while. Master Chief is rehabilitated. They all left Illyria. How much time has passed? Mm, um, that's hard to say. In the right timeline, um, there's a couple months that passes between Reach and the fall of all. Well, the Battle of all Defense of all. I mean, it's what six or eight months, Kevin, in between those two uh... battles. I do not remember. I thought we talked about this in a previous video, and it wasn't very long at all, because the yeah. Pillar of Autumn leaves Reach, hits the Halo, and they're there for like a week, and then they jump back, and Earth's going to get attacked in a few days, isn't it? I think so, yeah. So I may so be... So it's like it, two it's, weeks. Yeah, it's not long after Reach that they find Earth and attack. 
So my issue is that it's so nebulous with time frames. We're going to talk about this later on in the episode because they keep saying things like, he's been loose in the base for an hour. Okay. <laughs> How? Yeah. Um, I'm a little concerned about that because it doesn't keep you on a good timeline. <laughs> Kevin, you brought also, up a point. I'm sorry. I was say also, how is he loose in the base with all the cameras that you have everywhere recording secret conversations? That they make a point of looking right at the camera like three times are, in this episode. These are plot. These are plot cameras, like plot armor, but plot cameras. Exactly. We put these only where we had plot happening because we couldn't afford anymore. I just, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> it's, Kevin, before we started, you brought up a point about the rifle. You want to talk about that for a minute? Uh, Yeah. So one of the things that, that we were looking at, because I, I can't, I couldn't remember it and I couldn't find it. So in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong, but Kelly and Linda were known as the snipers of... The Spartan teams, they were the best. Uh, Linda was more known for being a sniper, but Kelly was not shabby with it. And it seems like Kai is playing, as Jake pointed out in a conversation before we started recording, uh, Kai is playing Kelly, Linda, and Kurt. Um, so Kelly and Linda could could reliably snipe like two miles, if, if memory serves. It, it's something dumb with a, a sniper rifle. And she said, when she said, I can bullseye an elite at 200 meters, I started looking up some of the equipment. And our current weaponry can shoot, like, I think it was like 3,000 feet. So it really bugged me. I'm wondering where they're putting all the money in this show, because I don't think the CGI is costing them enough to justify the whatever budget they have. They're certainly not putting it into advisors um because <laughs> yeah like geez she she basically said like the sniper of the silver team said i could shoot something point blank and hit it between the eyes like oh god what mm. so and google search please <laughs> about three weeks ago um when i can't remember what episode it was i think it was the, the run-up to the fall of reach i watched an episode about how the unsc um, the Holdo maneuver that we know from Star Wars um, mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. Last Jedi. <laughs> the whole idea of that is the momentum of the object propelled at near light speed basically just said that in front of me doesn't exist. The UNSC ships, and this is this really good video, if I can find it, I'll link it, um, talked about with the average length of a UNSC frigate and it took shots from the game where you go from stem to stern in X amount of time so it knows the time frame. And it knows the length. So it's calculating the mass of that ship propelled at that speed if you sped it up to its maximum speed, because that's just a cruising speed and that opening shots in Halo 2. And then you hurl it at a planet, you just annihilate the planet. Just gone. Mm -hmm. Um... And I think that's the logic they're playing with. I think they're playing very fast and loose with physics. Uh, I mean, let's let it, ignore the fact that they got a dude jumping around like Captain America mm -hmm. by design. But they're really playing fast and loose with physics, period. The other reason I brought up the time frame thing earlier, let's say it's been two months. We'll give Master Chief time to recover. Um... Yes, Perez, time to embed in Spartan 3 program. Last episode, two months ago, the Arbiter and McKee turned and headed toward the Halo and have been in a communications blackout with the Covenant ever since. That also doesn't square to me because you still got people on that ship. I mean, what happens in this episode was bound to happen, but it would have happened a long time before now. Thoughts, guys? And then we'll move on. Uh, I agree. Um, that was actually one of the only things. It was a bad lead up. It was poorly done. But it did show by the end of the Covenant War there was a serious issues within the Covenant. 
and Oni did even canonically play that to their advantage and use that to help split the covenant, which ultimately helped humans survive right. the war. Intelligence um, so, organization destabilizes. <laughs> that sounds oddly familiar. Um, but and no, I get because I remember we took advantage of the Sangheili Civil War. But my point is that ship, the Arbiter and McKee, have been headed toward the Halo for two months after being recalled to High Charity, and the priest knows that. So I'm a little. Again, it's it's very muddy. It's not specific, and the only only way to tell a good solid story is to to establish your universe, establish the rules of it, and live it. Like the expanse, they determine very early on the rules of gravity, acceleration, and all those things, and they dive into that hard. So yep. that's a little frustrating for me. Did you have something to add before we um, move on, Kevin? Yeah, I was gonna say so. One of the things about your two-month timeline uh, estimate there, so you got to remember, the Spartans heal abnormally quick. Like, look at um, look at Riz. Like you you saw the plasma uh, plasma ball, whatever, hit her in the back. Not only hit her in the back, but it lit up the front. So it did some internal piercing damage. It melted through some sh on her. Um, and she was up and walking around after, like, a week of, uh, after the surgery, something like that. I don't know how long they were on Illyria, but five days. the Spartans, yeah. So he was the up Spartans in vertical five here, days. Yeah, so the Spartans heal abnormally quick. Um, I, I would say Master Chief probably healed within the same amount of time as Riz from his wounds, right? Um, if that. So I, I don't think they're two months out i think we're maybe well two weeks at most so the reason i'm factoring all that in is master chief basically is fully healed well yeah. not fully healed because that's that's a plot point later on but perez is now embedded in the spartan priest and they've been able to mass produce propaganda and get out the word that master chief died on reach so i, I think it's a combination of those things but let's go ahead and move on to past credits um, we, we opened back up on Kai fighting on reach in her armor in the exact same hallway with the exact same buildings destroyed silhouette. Just dropping that plot point right there and wondering how the fuck did that guy pass? Whatever. Ackerson shows up in the simulation, has a conversation with her about training versus punishing herself for not being on reach. They didn't have mm. a really great question or great conversation about the mission to the Covenant of Corvette being a suicide mission. And she says, can we guarantee they'll get out? He says, did you ever ask for a guarantee? And I thought that was really smart because that is a thing. Spartans don't ask for a guarantee to get home. Uh, mm -hmm. We cut back to team plot uh, and everyone basically leaves the ship and splits up, which I did not understand why everyone just bolts in different directions. Soren and Master Chief, you're right, come up and are looking at the facility. And Soren goes, do you know what that is? And Master Chief says, yes, they're still making Spartans. Quan mm -hmm. has an acid trip uh, and follows the shaman again and then sees the troops. Um, Soren and his wife flee into the woods, I guess. Uh, Soren points out to Chief, like I mentioned earlier, he's completely jacked up and still armorless. Chief, even though he's armorless, takes down, I think they said, seven or eleven bad guys. Uh, and then gets captured by a horde of bad guys. Quan uh, dies in a hole because her brain vision says so. It doesn't die. Uh, Halsey shows up there in the sewers that Quan Ha jumps into. They have a wonderful conversation about Halsey uh, accuses Quan of ruining Master Chief, which I agree. Um, and when you cut back to the Arbiter branding himself like they do in Halo 2. Then we have a beautiful interaction between internal politics where the Sanghili Priest is introduced. So this section, guys, Nathan, opening section, uh, you know, we're there on Onyx. 
the conversation between Soren and Master Chief about the facility. Give me your thoughts on that based on what you know from the books and the training of the Spartans in Thermopylae. Back to so, first, quick question. Does Thermopylae exist in the lore? Uh, yes, I'm okay. pretty sure that's part of their training. They definitely learn the history of it and, you know, the tactics of the battle. Is Halsey was very big into, we're not going to just train these guys to be good shots. We're going to train them to be intelligent and, you know, resourceful, tactical. Um, and that's really what kind of set the Spartan 2s above the Spartan 3s. Is even Ackleson, and you see it with Kai and Ackleson. Kai wants them, she cares about them surviving. Right. Ackleson is like, they get out, they get out, great. If not, eh, <laughs> whatever. It's numbers. We got a lot more behind it. So that part of Spartan 3s was on top. Um, the Thermopylae, the training grounds, I do think. Not on Onyx, though, but on Reach, the Spartan 2s had a similar, I think it, they called it Camp Pain, similar training ground that was insane, especially for children. Did you say Camp um, Pain? Yeah. Camp Pain. Okay, for a second, I yep. thought you said Camp Pain. I was like, oh, like the Halo campaign? <laughs> no. It um, doesn't so, exist in the series. <laughs> that part of it, yeah. Um... I don't know. This part of it, I was like, mm, man, the, the conversation between Halsey and Quan Ha, I mm -hmm. thought, was probably one of the best dialogue pieces we've had long time. Um, oh, and then Chief uh, without armor kicking like seven mm -hmm. to eight guys' butts was just awesome. I, I did I agree. like that. I, I agree. Watching him basically soldier of fortune his way through these guys. And that's the point where I was telling you, he jumps like 30 feet. Like, get him. <laughs> uh, Kevin, in um, this timeline, the Arbiter brands himself as an uh, apostate. I'm trying to block that out of my memory. I'm aware. Now, in the other one, I think it's a brute that brands him while the elite told him, right? He's branded... Yeah, it, it's right in the it, game. It's something like that. Yeah. Thoughts, thoughts on this arbiter. Um, well, one, this isn't the arbiter <laughs> because we don't we don't know what he did. He they may be saying he is the arbiter, but you the arbiter title does not carry weight. Yep. Unless you know the transgression. Now, I, and I, I can't, I can't even think. Like, you, you have to understand if you haven't played Halo, the Arbiter, the 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 ship commander on the first Halo. The Halo ring was destroyed. This is their holy. It's it's like if somebody melted down the Holy Grail for Christianity. Yeah, like. It is, it is one of their sacredest symbols, and it was destroyed by Master Chief. It took that level for him to be branded a heretic. And again, the only reason the Prophets did that is because they needed an Arbiter, and they wanted right. to control him. Like, they, they took complete advantage of him, but they also needed a fall guy. Like, somebody had to take the blame. Um, and Regret was dead. So, but it, it's frustrating to me because I can't, you know, I, I feel like I am fairly well acquainted with the concept of honor in society, like, as an ideology. Right. And I can't possibly imagine... I can't possibly imagine any elite branding themselves. Like, th that's not something they would take on because they would always try to redeem themselves before they were branded a heretic. Right. Like, my God. <sighs> I agree. Um, talk to me about the Sanghealy Priest. I don't ever remember... 
priests. I, I remember in in Halo Legends, which if you haven't watched it, is a great primer. If you know nothing about the Halo universe, fantastic primer. It's called Halo Legends. So the first Arbiter's wife is the closest thing that could have been representative of a priest of the village or something. But in, in Halo lore, the prophets were considered the priests, and there's a very specific reason for that. It's because they controlled the faith. Yeah. They wouldn't let any other group determine the faith. They, they, they let people, if I remember correctly from some of the perspective you get on the Covenant, Nathan, you can correct me in, in this, but it's some of the Covenant stuff that you get in the book, uh, they would let, you know, people become spreaders of faith among their specific, like, species. Like, grunts could go out and preach to grunts, and elite could go out and preach to elites, but there was never, like, an elite priest embedded on a ship. Um, it's, it's, there's no honor in the position really it's yeah it's not something they would choose to do at least from my viewpoint so that i hated that um still wish the the priest had killed mckay 100 percent. yeah 100 you know, i want to i want to be clear here i like the actress for mckay she's doing a great job with the role mm -hmm. that she has because I, I remember the jar jar thing from star wars where that actor oh, got yeah. so much hate he wanted to quit acting he almost did so i don't blame the actor for the role they're given. She's doing a fantastic job with a role. That's the thing. Like, all of these, like, Natasha McElhone, or whatever the hell you say her name, is one of my favorite working actresses. Period. Full stop. Pablo Schreiber is an amazing actor. Is that his name? Pablo Schreiber? Master Chief? Um, yep. Porn stash. I think so. He's an amazing actor. But it doesn't help that they're being given shit sandwiches to work with. Mm -hmm. it's, it's stupid like they're being given impossible tasks and that impossible task is pleasing a fandom that they're not servicing like they're acting their butts off even Quan Ha like I can't stand the character but she is doing as good a job as she possibly can I believe she acid trips every time she acid trips I, right exactly snozberries taste like snozberries <laughs> But also, side note, yeah. the mysticism is getting out of hand. We still don't know who this old lady is. Like She's the spirits of the planets. I know, but what does that mean and where is it? I just I don't know. <laughs> please, for season three, because we there's too much money in this now for them not to do a season three. Um, please, hire so some advisors. They were saying, one... Paramount Plus is actually hemorrhaging money. They have cut a I bunch of Star Trek why. programming. Well, right. And this season costs way more than they anticipate actually making from it. So I don't know if we get a season three, which sucks Thank because... God. No. No, 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 no. no. It, it, it'll be ten years before they pick this property up again to do anything. Which is terrible. Fine. But... Like... I want to be. I, I honestly <laughs> hope that Paramount sells the IP to Netflix. And we get some real. Sell it to uh, Netflix. Because they have one Netflix, two punched and proved. Amazon, HBO, I don't care. HBO. Like, I don't care how, who you sell it to, but y'all clearly do not understand. Yeah being fans of something I, I would honestly i might actually agree with you after watching avatar i would i would probably give it to netflix because netflix seems to understand how to cut out crap that they don't need for the main plot and maintain characters that they do need for the main plot and weave them in in a plausible way without destroying everything so it, i agree i agree yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we cut back to Javelin team in another simulation. Um, just on the thought of simulations, I love how in this season, the only time we see a Spartan defending Reach in their armor, it's a simulation. Good job, Paramount. 
Um, we cut back to Javelin team, again trying to take the bridge. Uh, Perez usurps command and starts telling them what to do. And one guy says, oh, we're going to be like the bees. And the other guy says, great, we're all going to die. And I literally had to stop the recording. And I laughed so damn hard right here. So they get to the bridge. They spike the ship. They shut it down. And then they go to Expo. And Perez is creeped out because there are no Covenant here. I don't know about you guys. I got horror vibes from this. She then brings up to Kai. And Kai says, just take the win. And then we'll come back to that later. Because Kai talks to Ackerson about it. Um, we then cut to what I felt like was a scene right out of Jurassic Park. With the Marines basically wrangling Chief. Lieutenant Let's Bitch go. from one of the other episodes, Visigard, I believe, shows up again and taunts Chief and tells him about Cobalt Team. She gaslights him about Perengoski. And then he says, I'm coming for her. She says, Sure. And then he just chuckle fucks every single guard in this room. I don't know about you guys, but this felt great. <laughs> this. Yep. Uh, we then see Ackerson having shown Kai the footage, and we come up with another timeline issue again, because he's now been loose in the most important military installation in the UNSC for an hour by himself in sweatpants. He then gaslights Kai about John joining the Covenant. We cut back to McKee confessing to Cortana that her powers are gone. We then jump cut back again to John sneaking around in his jammies. Apparently everyone's oblivious to the seven foot man's existence. <laughs> we then cut to Halsey and Quan in my favorite interaction in the show. He says, Spartans are the reason my mother is dead. Halsey then says, please can we skip this part? I'm going to tell you, I had to pause the show again because I was like, yes, <laughs> and we skipped this part. Halsey gets lost. Quan uses her brain visions to find the right place. John goes into the room and accesses a map looking, I'm assuming, for Perengoski. We're going to stop here because we get to some pretty intense stuff here in a moment. Kevin. Did you get Jurassic Park vibes when they pulled Master Chief into the room and started tying him down a la T-Rex style? Uh, not really Jurassic. Like, I could see, but I didn't really relate it with Jurassic Park because I was just sitting there going, we're going to get to see him fuck shit up. We're going to get to see him fuck shit up. <laughs> like, we like the biblical I, character Samson, too, because they tied him to two yeah. posts and he killed everyone in sight. Yeah, but I think my favorite part of that entire thing, I love the fight scene. I loved him absolutely, you know, yeeting people like, <laughs> oh my gosh. There, there are so many scenes that reminded me of where they're trying to tie things down. But my favorite part had to be the end where the Marine looks at him and he looks at the Marine and they both look at the gun and Master Chief looks back at him and says, I wouldn't. And he goes for it anyways. It's like, dude. You just you watched who this the is. Terminator you murder know. squad. This is the man they're using for all of your propaganda. And you think you're going to be able to beat him three feet to a gun? Beat <sighs> fire. Yes. What got me best was the guy, he goes, huh! And then the cord stops him. He just grabs him and yanks him into a fist. I was like, yes! That, that was, was great. Good. Uh, Nathan, what's your thoughts on Ackerson functionally gaslighting Kai about all of it? This part of it, the the chief messing stuff up was great. Love that. But this whole thing with Ackerson, especially gaslighting Kai and trying to paint it that John's a traitor and he's working with Mahee, I wanted to scream. This is, uh -huh. no, it would never happen. It would never, ever, 
he would never betray. Only would never paint it to where, you know, he goes AWOL. He doesn't go AWOL until much, much, much later on in his career, and it actually involves Kulpana. Right. He goes AWOL. Uh, so it... Uh, uh, and it made me kind of a little mad with Kai that she was just so willing to take a order, and then eventually in the next scene, next part of it, we'll see what happens with that. But... Uh, yeah, I, I was very upset with this whole Ackleson Peyton Chief as as the traitor because never happened. And Oni would never even there even though Oni is as despicable, that is the only thing. As despicable as they'll painting Oni, they are that despicable. Mm -hmm. But even they wouldn't have done that. Because Chief is your best he's the best propaganda they have he's the best morale they have he's one of the best military assets they have right they wouldn't do that <laughs> yeah i think the only reason that he is doing that at this point is he's doubling down he had he left them he hung them out to dry he didn't kill him so now he's like well i guess i gotta kill him and the best way to do that is take my biggest gun and point it at him um the only way to do that Right, yeah, that's that's the only way Master Chief is going down. Um, I want to talk real quick, because we don't have a lot much um, much more time in this section. But Quan and Halsey is a weird, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Dynamic. It's a weird dynamic because Quan is basically turned into a ninja, and Halsey is is hands down probably the best brain the UNSC has, unless I'm wrong is the best brain yeah cortana is is a copy of court of halsey's brain all right yeah i didn't think about that spartans killed kwan's mother did that happen before the series began because i don't recall any collateral damage or anything in that first season in that first episode where they they land on madrigal and have that fight. Uh, yeah, that must have happened before. So that's an uh, off-screen. That's, yeah, that's, that's awesome. a pre-series event. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, I just want to say that was my favorite line of the episode. Can we just skip this part? Yeah. Yeah. So I like I, I like seeing the lines, but I still just I can't get it up enough to care for Quan Ha. I, I just can't. She's not a captivating character. And again, not the actress's fault. So, let's go forward in the in the episode. Kai confronts John. They have a back and forth where John tells her, hey, they fucked us. And now you're working for them and doing their bidding. I'm going to get Parangoski. And then Kai meet pace him to the wall. Um, he notably doesn't fight back. Uh, she does accuse him of turning. And she leaves him broken and unconscious. Uh, guys, I'm going to stop here for just a second. This made my stomach turn. Because in Captain America Civil War... Captain America beats the piss out of Iron Man. And vice versa. Iron Man blows Bucky's arm off. But they earned it because they showed the relationship and they justified why. We're going to take two minutes and talk about this. Guys, what are your thoughts on this fight? Because this is probably the most brutal thing we've seen so far in Halo. This this was even somewhat more annoying than the whole Kai and uh, Ackleson thing. Is again, the Spartan 2s, they would support each other before they would support Oni, hands down. The only time that the Spartan 2s even consider doing anything against Odles or doing anything a wallish in the remote is if it's 
if you're threatening a fellow Spartan too. Right. That is when they will go F, you know, forget protocol, forget orders. We protect our own. So for Kai to, to just be like, nope, I'm sorry, I gotta follow orders and beat the snot out of John. Yeah, like you said, it it I wanted to be like, you are not a Spartan too. Right. You're not a Spartan too anymore. <laughs> I I agree. Uh, I really much agree. I Kevin, agree. thoughts on the fight? Um so I, I, I agree with Nathan. So here here's one thing that also really, really irritates me about the writing style in this show and the the producers and directors allowing it to move along that route is they have a consistency issue. You have a you have a scene with Ackerson and Kai where Kai is going that is not possible. There must be an explanation. And Ackerson just says the most likely explanation is the one we probably don't want to hear. And then Chief does not attack her outright, which would have been his best move. His best move would have been to attack her before she got that put her between on, the so eyes and put her down. Yeah, um, it would have been a fight, but he would have had somewhat more of a chance. Once her helmet's on, like in the armor, you got you got to realize Spartans are three or four times faster than they normally are, and they're eight times faster than most human beings on a bad day. So that's pretty ridiculous. Um, well, and she's wearing a tank. They're, you're not even yeah. as a human as a Spartan without your armor. You're not fighting that. Yeah, you you can't punch through that armor. It it absorbs everything. Um, so, but Chief turns around and gives her an explanation that not only makes sense, but also lines up with the knowledge they would have of how Oni operates. Like, Spartans aren't selected because they're mindless drones. Right. The Spartans were selected because they displayed intuity or in, in, intuity, intuition. intuition. They displayed um, ability to evaluate situations. They displayed determine. They displayed everything you want in somebody who can step into a room and immediately take control, even if there's a five star general, an admiral, and the president of the damn colonies. Or, or Earth, whatever, whoever is in charge is there, a Spartan steps in and you you listen if right. they talk. That is how Spartans are. So for, for Master Chief to give her this perfectly good explanation and her to just turn around and be like, yeah, it, it's a consistency issue because Kai was looking for any plausible explanation of how he got off reach and how he was there and what happened. And she goes from that to, I believe Ackerson, who I've known for five minutes. Yeah. Because he gave me a promotion and a yeah. bunch of people that I think he's going to kill off. Like, she doesn't trust Ackerson. Through yeah. this whole episode, she doesn't trust Ackerson. And all of a sudden, he she's willing to take his word over this kid she's known since they were five or six. Exactly. It, it, it's horrible con inconsistency. It's horrible. I agree. Um, um, I was so really, let's, I'll uh, be honest. Real quick, and then we'll real, move on. Real quick. I was, I'll be honest. I was really hoping that it was going to turn into, yeah, that makes sense. And then Kai and Master Chief are loose in the facility, and they just go ham. Oh, that's definitely like, what's going to be next episode. Because she's going to show up with his armor. Now, we'll talk about it here in a second, but the way she left that next conversation, there's zero possibility she's on armor Ackerson's side. To show on screen. That's huh? why he's not in armor. <laughs> what? What? Master Chief's armor costs too much to show on screen. That's why he's not. That's the only reason well, well, I can think of. Um, so let's let's go ahead and plow forward. Um, Aragoski and Ackerson watch the uh, the meat tasting of Master Chief and talk about manipulation. Uh, she then goes wow. into what I assume is a CIC, the command and control, 
Cortana reaches out to Perengoski, and we learn what their deal is. As she's doing this and talking to Perengoski, Cortana wakes up the Master Chief and starts in toward the Keystone. Cortana reveals the location of the Covenant fleet to Perengoski, and then she says, You know, I've calculated all the odds, da 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 da. Uh, she's basically C3PO, but cute. Um, Perengoski doesn't care. Neither does Akerson. I don't know why they don't care. Like, we have thought throughout the season that her odds were the fall of Reach or the extinction of humanity. No, she's been calculating the odds of humanity attacking the Covenant fleet and succeeding. Ugh. <laughs> Perengoski functionally hangs Cortana out to dry. And she says one of the most hurtful lines in this episode, not hurt, sorrowful, will I be remembered? And then Perengoski says, how could we forget you? And I wanted to pick up an assault rifle and shoot her. Uh, we cut back to Halls and Quan Ha. Do what? At 200 meters. 100%. We cut back to Halsey and Quan Ha going down a keystone-shaped hallway to reveal a stargate, or I mean a random circle of stone, uh, with Miranda Keys, first time appearing in this season, working on it. Uh, yeah, money's on Quan Ha activating this. Uh, Soren and uh, his wife somehow have also gotten into the non-impenetrable military installation and are completely unobserved walking around. They find Thermopylae, cue the title of the next episode. Ackerson and Kai uh, talk about, in a simulation again, talk about putting John down and the Javelin exfiltration. She then takes him to Reach, to the simulation of Reach, which again I want to point out, this is the exact same hallway in the exact same spot with the exact same backdrop. This made my brain hurt, y'all. <laughs> she confronts Ackerson. Ackerson then tells Kai that he sent Black Ops to go finish the job she started. Uh, Cordana does her Cortana stuff and gets Chief to the artifact. We then get more Covenant politics, and we get an epic speech from the Arbiter that's about 30 seconds long. And he chops off the head of an elite, and the Sanghili Civil War begins two games early. Three games early? No. Oh. He chops, I'm pretty sure, I'll have to watch it again, but I'm pretty sure he simultaneously chops off the head of the priest and the two guards of the priest standing next to him. He might have did the two guards, but I, I looked for the priest because the priest jumps back. He doesn't get the priest. He gets, like, his clothes. You see a piece of his clothes fall off, but he doesn't get the priest. Um, that, that explains why there was another priest jumping around. I was like, why were there two yeah. of them? <laughs> now there are two of them. The Sith. The um, Sith. Anyways, uh, we then oh my God, cut away from the Healy epic Sanghealy on Sanghealy fight to focus on the key. Because why not? Army crawling it to the glowing rock as Chief approaches it. All the rocks glow. They found all their stones. We cut to black. Yeah, connected. Our production assistant, who you cannot see on the video right now, is really confused because he hasn't watched the episode. Uh, so yes, McKee and her lover fondle their stones, and we fade out. So, guys, who thinks, uh, what, what do you think is going to happen, Nathan, once the stones do their mumbo-jumbo shit? I, the, the, like, like we said, the out of the wheel mysticism... It's so annoying because, like, this whole sequence where the chief has to touch it and McKee has to touch it, and then we fade to black right on that. Ah, why are we focusing on this? Why? Uh, God, right? Like, we had the start of the Sanghealy Civil War, which was a lot more important, and we go off that and focus on fucking. McKee, why? Ah, the, you sought to show the relationship between Chief and Cortana, how it should have been all yes. along, <laughs> which you wait till now to show that, which you should have shown that way back. Ah, 
and then we get to see Moanda, which that I that was a pleasant surprise. Um, and I kind of liked the shocked look on Halsey's face of what? <laughs> right. It. Uh, yeah. It. Like the start of the Civil War, Halsey seeing Moanda, the start of the St. Healy Civil War. I was like, if they just end it here, okay. But no, they have to end it on some BS stuff with McKee and Chief and some more mysticism that we don't care about and isn't part of the universe. Agreed. <laughs> uh, fucking greed. Kevin. Um, yeah, again, I already mentioned it once. The mysticism is getting over the top. 100%. And it's 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 turning into the level 20 wizard that you bring into your D&D campaign because you just realized you're about to TPK. Like, like oh, wait, you're not going to die. Gandalf is here. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's... It's irritating beyond belief. Again, for the start, uh, well, first, I wouldn't call that the start of the Sangheili Civil War because it's one ship. If they turn around and they go, my brothers, they're going to get blown the hell up. Oh, 100%. Um, so, the, the, I would say the reason they cut to McKee is because her contacts, her contact lenses are cheaper to get camera footage of than all of the CGI they would have needed to do to actually show that fight. Um, so but that's the thing. You don't 3D model just the legs of the creatures because they've already modeled all those things. Oh, yeah. That whole scene, somewhere in a vault, you can pan out and that whole scene is intact. It's there, yeah. It's I all don't there. understand the narrative choices they're making. Of focusing on the turd in the punch bowl. It's about McKee and John. And uh, he's got to go to the Halo to get some nookie. That's what the fail is. I mean, honestly, it's a better love story than Twilight. Um. <laughs> uh, while you're um, not wrong, Nathan. How how capable is Cortana? Cortana, other than the Spartans, is the best AI humanity has ever built. One of the best, again, one of the best military pieces that the UNSC has. And it's so annoying that she is wasted as like this some sort of bi oni liaison thing and is not even with chief ah it i hate it i hate it so much is this is not the cortana that we know and love this is some is let me tell you something the cortana that we knew in the games would have looked at pelgowski and said say something like I will release all the atmosphere, we'll take all the oxygen out of this area if you mess with like Fultana wasn't the type that was gonna be pushed around or you know, told what to do. She was too smart, she was too feels and I hate it. <laughs> uh great. I just oh god. Yeah, um, so we only have a few more minutes. Let's get some overall thoughts. But one thing I want to ask is, so my money is on they touch these rocks. I'll bet you that stone gate activates. I don't think we're getting a pillar of autumn or uh, an amber clad or I don't know fucking Jimbo's skyship. It doesn't matter. I don't think we're getting any of that. I think we're going to walk through a portal and land on Halo. I think you're probably right. Which. <sighs> which would be like that's there's no like kevin has said there's no saving it at this point this it's... this episode was the <laughs> the the final nail there's no recovering the show in any semblance of 
any timeline. So I, I, I was I was actually hopeful last episode when we ended showing the Spartan threes. I was mildly hopeful that they were gonna drop the chief, they were gonna drop Cortana, they were gonna drop all the bullshit timelines and, and characters and everything. And they were gonna go, hey, surprise, we had to give you background on what a Spartan's kind of supposed to guidelines, but right. then they were gonna go to the Spartan threes and they were gonna show the struggle and strife and they were gonna do the Spartan threes because they're like, the Spartan threes really haven't been done. So we're gonna do the Spartan threes. I, and then, yeah. Pass, hard pass. Like, I hope General O'Neill comes out of the Stargate and kills everybody. That's how they're going to beat the Covenant fleet. They're going to open up a super gate, and it's Kaswoosh is going to blow them up. No, the, that's that's the true secret of the, uh, the Ark of Truth. They, it didn't reveal everything. They just saw there was another universe they could conquer, and right. the Ori, the Halo universe. Kill them all. All right, Nathan, and final thoughts. Uh, it it was a disappointing episode, and good luck for us having any saving of a season. More. Agreed. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I feel the same way. I think I, you know I've felt this story's been unsalvageable for a while now, and they're just shoving it harder into the hole. <laughs> Uh, so, that all said, this has been our review of Episode 6, Season 2, Halo, the series on Paramount Plus titled Onyx. Uh, if you want to follow us and see all the other things we're doing, we're going to do Star Trek Discovery uh, coming in April. We're going to look at Acolyte in June. Um, we're even looking at a couple of other things to maybe cover. So, I'm super excited. Stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't to get all those updates. Um Check the link in the description for all of our, 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 I can't say parent channels. It's like our children channel. Uh, subsidiaries. There we go. <laughs> Tick for our kids. Uh, if you got a specific like in nerdy franchises, we got homes for the big tent poles. Check those out. We're doing Bad Batch right now uh, over in Star Wars land. And we're getting ready for a, a review of, oh man, we just did Madam Web. Another thing you should skip. But that said, I'm the Jake the Nerd on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube doing a playthrough of Secret of Man on Saturday nights and Baldur's Gate on Sunday mornings. Um, Kevin, where can they find you, sir? Uh, you can find me kicking around the network and uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, your subsidiary comment, all I could think was, uh, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? <laughs> eh, Nathan, dear God, where can they find you? Uh, so they can find me, Yellow Bladed Knight, at TikTok. And then, of course, on the Nord Network, reviewing, uh, finishing this god awful series. And then uh, also doing random trailers and whatever else the network has been. Awesome. And you can find us at our handles here in our nameplates. Uh, one other thing I'll point out is coming soon, Nathan and our friend Gresk is going to be doing. A playthrough of the Halo games starting after uh, at 11.30 on Saturday nights after my Secret of Mana streams on the Nerd Network and our affiliates. Uh, all that said, like I said, like and subscribe if you want to hear us trash the rest of the Halo series. <laughs> Otherwise, we will see you next week. Have an awesome night.